Welcome to another episode of Wings of the Raven. I'm your host, J.R. Bloodsteel. Our story tonight was sent in by James, who wanted to share his experience and to remind everyone that when your gut is telling you something isn't right, you probably should listen. I worked as a pest control tech for a handful of years back in the later 2000s. I had seen a lot of weird things during my time on this job, but they were mostly all bug related and could be handled by some chemicals. But what I came across on a summer's evening in July of 2008 was by far the most disturbing event I had ever experienced. I was edging towards the end of my shift and I only had two stops left for the day. I was just doing routine work, nothing fancy or time consuming, spraying and then leaving. It was a breeze right until I got to the second to last house. I had called beforehand to let the homeowner know I was on my way, but they didn't answer and they didn't call back. I assumed that maybe they weren't home. Against my semi better judgment, I figured I would go spray and leave. I was so close to being done for the day. I was going to risk it. Upon entering the driveway, I was surprised when I found the outside light on and a bunch of random things scattered along the walkway. There were a few cardboard boxes, what looked like a few pieces of clothing tossed onto the plants, and just little things that definitely didn't belong outside. Immediately, my internal warning system went from 0 to 100. Looking up at the front of the home, which wasn't that far from where I had parked, I could see the front curtains were closed and there was a thin rim of light coming from around the front door. It appeared to be ajar. Groaning, I rested my head back for a second. I called the homeowner again, and when they still didn't pick up, I came to the conclusion that things aren't always what they may seem, and that goes both ways. While this entire situation looked sketchy as hell, I figured it might also be completely fine. The last thing I wanted was for someone to call my supervisor and complain about how I didn't show up. Pulling up my adult bootstraps, I exited my truck as quietly as I could. The driveway was made up of gravel, and I should also mention that this house sat right on a busy road, so if something super weird had happened, someone would have seen it. There are neighbors right beside the home and cars passing by every few seconds. As I approached the house, I stayed quiet for a moment before calling out and announcing my arrival. Just a second later, I heard the faint sound of a woman's voice coming from inside the house. At this point, my skin began to crawl. I called out again, this time coming up to the front door. This was when I realized that the woman's voice was coming from 20 feet or so away from the front door, and she was calling out for help. Her voice sounded rough and older, frail and shaken. Please, I need help. I'm in the kitchen. I've fallen and I've broken my leg. I can't reach my phone. I felt like a terrible person, but I wanted to walk away. I'm at this sketchy house. It's getting progressively dark outside, and there's a woman asking me to come help her. Could it have been innocent? Yes. Could it also have been the place where I was going to get murdered? That was now a possibility running through my mind. I muttered some quick and quiet curse words under my breath as I slowly pushed the front door open with my foot, the living room now in my sight. Instantly, I was hit in the face with a pungent odor that nearly knocked me over. It was a cocktail of what smelt like rotten food, human excrement, and animal excrement. The condition of the home was just as shocking there was a large area rug completely bunched up and thrown around in the middle of the room. There was a table on top of the couch, chairs thrown here and there, and more random things just lying all over the place. There was no doubt about it now. I had just came across something that was very abnormal, was not innocent, and now my stomach was resting in my chest. As I entered the home, I looked around, trying to make sure there wasn't someone waiting around a dark corner. Walking through the living room was a challenge all in itself, but when I finally made it into the kitchen area, I nearly dropped a brick. There was an older woman lying on the floor, seemingly naked, and was only covered by a thin, small blanket. My eyes darted from her to the condition of the kitchen and then back to her. 
There were dirty dishes stacked up in the sink and were overflowing onto the countertop. There were pots of food, at least what I'm guessing was food, on the floor, and there were utensils, including knives, scattered about. By now, my fight or flight had shifted into full gear. First of all, and I don't mean this in a disrespectful way, the woman was slightly overweight. I'm five foot eight and a whopping 150 pounds soaking wet. There was no way I was going to be able to help her on my own. And even if I could, it was obvious to me that someone needed to be called. This wasn't normal. This was so far from normal, I was no longer on earth. I told the woman who was seemingly calm for supposedly breaking her leg that I was going to go and call for help but I'd have to go back to my truck because I had left my phone there. Of course, that was a lie, but I didn't want to be in this house any longer than I needed to be. The smell had already made me nauseated, and knowing there were knives lying on the ground within reach of this woman made me extremely uncomfortable. She protested at first, but only for a second. I was already on my way out. I was not staying in there a second longer. The moment I made it outside, I called 911, and told the operator what was going on. I was so uncomfortable that I waited inside my locked truck until the police and an ambulance arrived. An officer took my statement and soon freed me to go. I had already missed my next appointment, and after what I had just witnessed, I wasn't about to call that homeowner and ask them if I could still drop by. Instead, I called my supervisor, told him what happened, and got the okay to go home. A few days later, I came across a voicemail on my work phone asking me to please return this person's call. When I did, I quickly learned that it was the daughter of the woman. She first apologized for what had happened and then informed me that her mother had a complete psychiatric breakdown and was getting treated. She never had a broken leg and apparently when the police entered the home and she was finally lifted from the floor, she had a large chef's knife tucked underneath the blanket. I feel for her family, but I am thankful I walked out when I did. To this day, all these years later, and while I know it was out of the woman's control, the fear I felt that evening will forever be unmatched. I don't like to think about what would have or could have happened had I approached her. There is a chance that I wouldn't have made it home to tuck my son into bed, and that scares me most of all. A few weeks after that incident, I requested an internal job. I took a pay cut, but at least I'm no longer in the field. There have been no calls from that address since. I can only hope things turned out all right for her and her family. Do you have a true horror story you would like to share? Email me at wingsoftheraven.podcast at gmail.com and it might be featured on the podcast. Thanks for listening. Stay safe.